Hey everybody, welcome back. And today on the bench, I've got HMV Little Nipper. Um, its model number is A131. Now, whether it's an A31A or an A31B, I'm not sure yet. Um, both look exactly the same. Um, the only difference that I can work out, a major difference, is the, uh, the valve lineup on the, um, the 131A. That was made in 1949. It had a 6A8 and an EBF35. And um, the output valve was an EL33 and a 6X5 as a re, um, uh, rectifier. And the uh, 131B, that's the Mark II, that was made in between 1950 and 51. And the output valve was changed to a 6V6. So I suppose we'll um, be able to work it out once we get it open, as long as it hasn't been touched and valves haven't been changed, uh, work out which one it is. Anyway, case is in excellent condition. Um, really simple little mantle. Uh, yeah, the uh, tuning knobs, no, well, the uh, indicator sort of seems to want to move, but it doesn't. Um, what's that? Uh, <laughs> we'll have to check that out. That'd be tone control, I guess. And no power cord, of course, but um, all here, all here. So I'm going to get it out of the case, and uh, let's see if we're going to make this thing work again. Okay, all those screws are off, and up it comes. And I'll just get that case out of the way. And yeah, it looks, that's really nice, yeah. All right, ah, uh, that little, the, the um, where is it, the button for the um, tone? Uh, it's full out of the case, here it is. Got it, that's broken. Yeah. So we'll see what we can do about um, trying to repair that. Oh, well. Guess we can do that. We can try anyway. But apart from that, looking at the radio, and yep, it looks all original. Yeah, power cord's been cut. Let's look at the other side. All the valves there, and I think. Well, look at look at the guts of it first. So yep, yeah, all original, all good, great. Now. What have we got here? What's that? There's the uh, output. Is that EL33? Looks like a 6v6 to me, but that's uh, a 6v6. So that will make this one. Uh, if I go back to my chart again, which one, which one, which one? It's the 131B Mark II. All right. Now I'm going to get some uh, power onto it. And we will check this thing out and do the normal test. So I'll just get, I'll get myself ready. Okay, I've got our power hooked up. And um, let me see, let me see. I know, speaker first. I'm just going to do the power, but let's just check the speaker. So, on our 6v6, uh, there's, there's our blue wire, there's that red wire. And, um, yeah, they're going to be coming from the um, output transformer. So let's, let's hook up one on the blue. Where's that red wire? Naturally, I can't see it on this angle. You probably can. There it is. Uh, which one? Which one? Which one? You know, I can't be sure. I'm going to try that one first. Let's see. Am I right? No. Give me a second, will you? <laughs> it's a mess in there. I think I got it. I think I got the right one. Let's try. Yep. But... Oh, there we go. Bad connection. Cool. Okay. Speaker and output tranny are fine. Now, let's get some power to it. And check. See if our transformer is okay. And being a 6x5, um, 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 well, I can see 6.3 volts right there, the uh, orange wires. Uh, these clips are good, but they're not, you know. Nah. Doesn't want to go on. Come on. 
that's it and I'll just earth the other one okay and put it on AC okay give it a bit of power uh, it looks like we've got 6.3 And HT will be oh, definitely the green wire there goes to transformer and there's a white wire right there. Okay, again I'll hook it on, I'll come back. I finally got them to stick onto the terminal. So um bit of power. Oh yeah, plenty there. And uh as you can see, dog gods working, so at least I don't have to replace that. All right, I'm going to change those two filter caps. Um, I had a look, one's a 16, one's a, one's a 24, and I can tell you what, it's going to be pretty easy to do, because while it's a strange case design, just easy to get to. So that's our 24, our main one. Oh, actually, actually, let's, let's do that other test. Let's see if we're actually getting some uh, DC into the system. Oh, wrong way. There, positive there, negative there. Bit of DC power. And take it up slowly. And I'll be watching the current limiter as well. So here we go. That's about 100 volts. Looking good so far. Some movement. That's about 150. Like to see a bit more before I turn it off. Yeah, I'm at 180 volts. And expect to see a little bit more current than that, but of voltage. But then again, could be the uh, could be the valve, could be the filter caps as well. So um, they've got to be changed, uh, the caps that is. So I'll change those and we'll come back and give another test. Okay, the caps are in, a nice easy job. Um, there's the main one there, the other one's uh, oh, around, around the side there. And here's the 24, <laughs> and you can see <laughs> we've got a, a little bit of an explosion happening there. So that's, uh, that's completely rooted. No, no wonder. Anyway let us give it some power and see if we get some higher voltage coming through so here we go that's 100 volts so far and we've got nothing why isn't the dull globe lighting up okay let me just check my connections okay don't know what was going on, but um, give it another go. Nah, it's just trying to test me, I guess. Boom. Okay, I'm at a, I'll bring it up to 180. And the voltage is dropping. But the radio is alive. I think I want to see more than 98 volts. Okay. Well, it works. It works. I suspect, um, should, again, I really should be getting more voltage than that, I, I would think, um, into the caps. But I suspect it's just um, the other waxies in there, possibly a resistor, who knows. Um, so, but the radio works. That's good. I'm going to change those waxies, and we'll come back and see what sort of improvement we're getting. Well, I've changed four caps so far. Um, nothing of any consequence, I don't think. Uh, one of the um, tone control, 0.1 there, 
1.0 something or other there um, and one on the back there uh, just double eight four seven so let's see if that's improved any there's still about oh, I think three caps to go a couple of brown turds and uh, another waxy well voltage looking good sort of Okay. Where's the how tone? Do we oh, God. How do we ensure that our kids will not be the first generation in history to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents? Well, it's not too and bad. that's the reality out of years of study. Still, it could, should be better. Should be a lot better than that. Uh, I'm not getting any joy out of that tone control. Strange. Anyway, something to look at later. Oh, um, where are we? Powers off. Good, I can touch it. And so, what have we got here? That point one, and that leaves these two. And one of them's a point oh one, and the other one's a point oh five. Uh, oh yeah, and oh another two under there. So, um, which you can't see, but there's two more here. So I'm going to change the. Um, straightforward ones, waxies, and then uh, lose those three turdies to go. I've just finished changing those uh, two, two of the brown turds, and uh, they're both point oh ones, and uh, that's one of them there with that great big fissure right down the middle of it. Uh, I quite like this one, if you can see. <laughs> it's blowing it. <laughs> I can actually um, see some metal inside there. <laughs> so, anyway... Yeah, I think it should work a hell of a lot better now that those two are out. We've got some brand new ones in there. So let's switch it on and see what we get. I always like to um, hear improvements as we just move along. A lot of different Here it comes. Rescuers are racing to find well, more survivors nice. a week after one of the worst earthquakes in <laughs> Turkey and Syria. Uh, Linda Groen reports. More than 33,000 people oh, yeah. are now known to have died. And even <sighs> after nearly one week has passed since the massive quake and aftershock hit the two hey, nations, there are still survivors being pulled out of the rubble. This man says he's missing his mother and sister but who are trapped, but he's refusing to give up hope. That's zero volume. He says he got out of the rubble after... So, uh, maybe the volume pot, oh, it's, it's supposed to be an on-off switch too, but that's not working. It's not clicking over or clicking off. So, um, I'll have to check that out, but that'll be the last thing I, I'll probably do. Uh, for now, another two caps, and then we'll just check those resistors. Well, I've changed all the caps and uh, just powered it up now. you hear all the music way that you put stuff together. Sounds, sounds good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's on zero volume. We can still hear it. But like I said, we'll check the um, the volume pot out. And um, it's running really well. So let's just do a quick quick check of some resistors. And uh, what's that one? 500k. Let's see what we're dealing with here. What do we got? 5 meg. What's going on here? Come on. Try again. Uh, fly weeds look a bit dirty. Come on, come on, you can't be dead. Hmm, I'll get some different probes. I'll get my pin probes. So... Yeah, you're working. Let's now. Can we get a reading of this? Six hundred and twenty-one k. You're going. Um. Right. Next one, just above it. It's uh fifty k. What's that read? Sixty-seven. And. Uh, I want to keep the uh, multimeter in the camera. So, what's that? Uh, 100k? 137 and rising. 
Yeah, so, oh, uh, okay. So, anyway, those three will get changed, and um, I'll do checks with the other ones, and, um, yeah, any higher ones, just get rid of them, replace them. Okay, all those caps and resistors that need to be changed have been changed, and actually there's quite a few resistors there, and um, not so much on the other side. Um, what else? So, I'll have to put this little copper shell wing back in, and... Uh, Solder that back up, and that'll be okay. With a little paper covering. What else have I done? Well, it seems that the volume control is fine now. The pot's okay. So, um, it's not completely silent, but it's very, very, very faint um, in the um, off position. So, clearly, um, somehow, some way, there was a component, a cap or a resistor, or both, that uh, was affecting it. So, that's good, and... What else have I done? A uh, little volume. Oh, sorry, the tone. Well, I've uh, managed to uh, glue that in. I'm just letting the epoxy dry. And also, show you on the um, the mechanism for turning the, uh, the gang. Let me see if I can get that in there. There we go. I'll come in. And it's rubber. And that rubber just, um, just yeah, just pushes along the uh, the dial drum there. And there was a flat spot in it, so um, hunted around in the garage, and I meant I haven't. I was thinking, oh, you know, get that liquid rubber stuff. Well, I didn't have it, but I had this T Rex power, and um, I forgot I had that. Anyway, um, it's essentially liquid rubber. <laughs> And, uh, it dries really, really hard and still um, reasonably soft to the touch, just just like rubber itself. So I've um, placed uh, a little a little bit on there on the flat spot, and I'll probably have to build it up. And uh, it's going to take a bit bit to dry, just a bit tacky at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's going. I think that's going to take me uh, a fair while. But okay, here's my attempt at. <laughs> Recoding the surface with uh, that liquid rubber stuff that I had, and as you can see, it's a fairly rough job. Um, tried different applicators, and I eventually ended up using my finger. Um, but it doesn't go on smoothly, unfortunately. So that's going to require a lot, a lot of work. Uh, however, not all is lost. I happen to be in the garage, and uh, I spied a chassis, and it's the exact same as this one. And it had the uh, little um, mechanism there, shaft and the rubber, and it's in a lot better condition. So talk about luck. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in, and that should fix it up. And as I said, I will keep the other one because I'm in spare, and you never know, never know when they'll come up uh, or need one again. So hopefully. That will do the trick and give us a nice smooth motion when we're um, dialing through the stations. So, so I've got that replacement um, <laughs> shaft and rubber on there and it's working. It's not 100% smooth, but a vast improvement on what it was. So that's all good. Now, I gave that uh, backing plate a bit of a spray, made it a, a sort of nice burgundy colour. And I've given the uh, dial pointer a uh, coat of white nail polish. So, uh, yeah, Sabrina is still looking for a nail polish, but she's not going to get it. Anyway, anyway, um, well, a couple of things to do. Um, well, what have I got? Oh, a power cord. I'll get that done. And I'll get that back in the case and we'll get a final run through. What's the quickest way to get in a fight in an Australian pub? Just turn around and drink your beer. Out of your midi or schooner, whatever you're drinking, turn your glass upside down, and that's it. You challenge everyone in the bar. You ever seen it happen? Yes. What's the quickest way to get in a fight in an Australian pub? Just turn a bloody glass up, fella, like just like that, but I've got something in this, I don't want to waste the beer. Well, silly, I've never been in a fight in my life. Well, I reckon the quickest, there's two main ways. The quickest, I'd say, would be to interfere in other people's conversations, and secondly, would be to or a difference in opinion in as regarding sport, the main thing. I've never been in one. Print somebody else's beer. The quickest way 
is down Wallamaloo. Well, there's only one thing to do with a scientific hypothesis, and that's prove it. I think I'm a little skeptical of this business of uh, hands up on the bar causing a fight, and that's what I'm going to do is check it. You see, I told you I didn't think I can get in a fight this way in a Sydney bar. Okay, it's all done. Back in the case. And uh, now you know how uh, you got into a fight in a pub back in the uh, 60s. Probably the 70s and 80s too. Don't know about today. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'm sure it still happens. Um, let's turn this thing on. I'll just turn the lights on. Off. And hopefully it works. Ooh, lights came on. Good stuff. Actually, that... Uh, Burgundy uh, backing panel looks good, and the uh, the white doll pointer looks even better. So that we need to look into. And when we talk about concussion, it's not that maybe one time where I know Kirsten as a clumsy child yeah. you fell over. <laughs> well, uh, time works. Yes, I stupidly told you this story. Of Rummel, who I believe now to have died, but it's a <laughs> This history, one accessible, nice. but also knowing this history as well, like what nice. happened. Um, yeah, as I said, the um, Bloody Patrol on the opposition, not entirely quiet, but you know, I've had lots of radios like that, and I don't have that particular volume pot to replace. Um, it's got an extra lug down the bottom, uh, probably a, a tap at 30k or something, who knows. Um, but look, it, it works fine. Great, great little radio. So uh, this one, I, again, uh, a real classic example of um, um, bad sound coming out of just bad capacitors. And um, yeah, work your way through it. And it came up a treat. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. And I will be back very, very soon. So take care, everybody. Have fun. <laughs>